Okay, folks, Wednesday evening here, and uh, let's pick this back up where we left off. If you guys don't know where you left off, then it was uh, painting the fast blades that we got going on. We've got um, two done, and I'll show you that where we left off here. As soon as I can find the camera, it's very uh, deceiving. You think the camera's in one place and it's somewhere else. I like moving it like let me get it further into the view and it's you have to do the opposite of how it would normally be so let's see if we can get a get these to focus on them wherever they are so we've got two of these um, fast blades here they're equipped with the sickle swords of or capeches as they're sometimes known and um, they have their shields, they're some kind of goat hide or something like that. I've got kind of a regular pattern that I did punch through, powered through, figured out something that I like, and it should work fine with the, um, the ground color that I have planned for them. So we've got, um, we've got two of them done. Actually, one of them is done, and the other one, the back of the shield, isn't completely done. So we're going to do hit that back of the shield when we're doing the next guy. So let's just set these guys off to the side. Pick up another one of these folks and, and go through from there. All right, so let's get uh, the stuff that we have here. Let's get... I got a lot done last night through the power of coffee, which of course meant I had trouble falling asleep, but it happens. It's better than not being productive. Going to sleep early isn't going to get this army done. <laughs> That's not going to work. All right, so let's move this out of the way. We should be fine there. All right, and um, so we've got a, I got a paper cut here on my finger. I'm not even sure how I got it. Um, and it's funny, it hurts more today than it did yesterday. But I think that's uh, the last time I got one, I noticed that was the case too. All right, so we're gonna do uh, his battle sarong, so to speak. So let's grab a color that uh, we're gonna use as a base and um, and go from there should be able to do this beige color which is one of those colors that doesn't mix well we're going to grab some SS camel black and we're going to use that as the darkener instead of black Give a little bit of a brown hue to it and get some of this stuff here on the on the palette. Actually, I'm gonna take a little break. Not really a break, but I'm gonna go I'm gonna go wet this sponge a little bit. I'll be right back. doing this yesterday and I never did but I think today it's probably a good idea to go ahead and, and get that wet all right we had a pretty good turnout yesterday we'll see if we can we can do that again today all right so let's get some of this SS camo black down here taken over by these paint colors which is almost always the case anyways 
and this is going to be super wet. Oh, it's this color. There we go. This is a color actually that had sat on a shelf for so long that I think the tip of it dry rotted. And um, it actually fell apart several years ago. There's plenty of paint in there and it's plenty fine. It doesn't like to mix well together, that particular shade even with one of those mixing balls, but well, we'll make it work. All right, so we're going to use this color here with this SS Camel Brown. And we're just going to paint all this battle sarong in that color. So there's 15 figures in these three units. Three units? I'm sorry, five units. Five units of three figures each. So there's three different poses, five of each different pose, and of course they'll be mixed and matched on each stand, but we're painting all of this first pose all at once and then we'll go on and do the next one and, and so forth hello from michigan mr patriot how are you welcome you're the first one here had a good turnout yesterday a good turnout meaning a good five five to seven people following me pretty much all night which is Kind of high on a weeknight, um, but we got a lot done. Well, we didn't get a lot done. We painted for a while, let's put it that way. Didn't get a lot done because it just takes forever to get anything done. But uh, I climbed the hurdle of, I didn't know what I was going to do with the shield. So I think we got that kind of resolved. I'm pretty happy with how they turned out. Now we're going to ditch this brush because we need to start getting into detail territory. But yeah, we, I was, I painted till like 10 last night, which was great. It was the power of coffee and, and other people that came on. So doing better, got some painting done. There you go. That's always an improvement. So. Okay, so we're going to lighten this up here. Yeah, with the first batch of uh, that thing that was going around, I actually didn't know anybody that came down with that. But this latest one, it just seems like uh, there's people all over the place. So, hope you're doing better. We have a visitor. Hello. You gonna to stick to the red chair? Okay. If you do the couch, that's fine. Just from the clipboard over, you should be good. Okay. okay. Eureka USA delivered my ABs two days from order. So um, Joe, which I suspect Joe will probably be on later tonight, he ordered some as well. He wanted to get some uh, Indians and. Um, you know, not, not from uh, Rajasthan, but from, uh, you know, Washington State. And, um, you know, the Native Americans, the, the totem pole type folks. And um, Eureka makes some nice figures for them, but he didn't want to order them from Australia because now the shipping costs are just loony. Uh, but he had good results with um, with uh, Eureka USA. Um, I don't know that they have a whole lot of stock, it, but the fact that they can just order from Australia, it didn't it didn't take him as long as he thought it was going to. 
So he was happy with the service. I happen to like Eureka figures a lot. Um, uh, my Nan Chow are some of my favorite figures that I have. And, um, and they're made by Eureka. And, um, but he had a, a positive experience with them. Uh-oh. What's this notification? Hold on one second. Error. YouTube is not receiving enough video to maintain smooth streaming. As such, viewers will experience buffering. I had never seen this before. Uh, it says stream is healthy. Stream status poor. Are you on 5G? I'm on 5G, yeah. Yep. Yeah, I don't know why. I've always seen it says streams help. Well, now it's back to hell. Excellent. Did you do something different? No. You know, like I said, folks, it's the Taliban. You pull out of Afghanistan and they're loose, causing all kinds of uh, issues, like the gremlins from the Kremlin. Okay. Well. <laughs> Never had any issues from Eureka. Very fast. Got a buffer a few minutes ago. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on. What's that guy's name? Timothy. Who? Our person. Uh huh. Timothy. Uh, light his ass up. <laughs> oh man. If it's not one thing, it's something else. You know, I actually had really good results using my phone. The problem is, is, and I'll say it again, as soon as YouTube sees that, oh, you have a mobile connection, they automatically max you out at 720p. So it doesn't matter whether your phone is capable of 4K, 8K, whatever, which mine is, the fact that it is a mobile connection, it gets dumbed down to the fact that you can only do 720. And 720 just doesn't cut it. It's just, it's just crummy for... Um, you know, it's funny how you're, you're, the human eye gets used to whatever it is that you have because you, you'll watch like videos of like old sitcoms or something like that that's on YouTube and the resolution is absolutely hilarious, horrible, but that's what we were used to and we just kind of accepted it. But, you know, you just, you're, the human eyesight just gets used to whatever it is that you have, so... The example I'll always use is you'll have a small television, then you go out and buy a big one. And the first week, you're like, wow, this thing is massive. And after a year, you're like, yeah, it's the size of the TV. That's just kind of, you know, how we adapt. That's how we survive the Ice Age. If someone is on your wireless, it'll chew up bandwidth. Well, we supposedly have plenty of uh, bandwidth. We don't have that many things going on it. So the funny thing is, is um, I did a speed test as soon as we got this, um, the cable modem. And my cell phone signal is just as fast as the speed test for the cable modem. So, okay, so this is what we're going to go with. We're actually going to add a little bit more of the buff color with this. Just a tiny little bit more. And then we'll start lightening this up because we want a subtly different all kind of a undyed uh, clothing colors nothing too fancy And then we're going to add, just for good measure, I'm, I know I'm going to have to put more white down. Yeah, it dries out so easy.
of this to lighten it up some. We're going to call that let's see how different it is from this white one. Oh, that's good. That's enough of a difference between those. This guy's kind of kind of yellowish here, so. That'll work. Um, I'm actually going to. I don't know if I'm going to put any color on them. Certainly not all the. Not all these guys that have these battle sarongs. That's a catchy name. Um, have um, are going to have patterns on them. We could always add them later if it looks like it's kind of. Uh, lacking of that well, let's get some of the um, let's get some of the bronze and do our bronze mix here I think like the world's smallest spray can. Just is it Iron Breaker? Iron Breaker, yeah. And that. Okay. Yeah, this this um, airbrush thinner is really amazing stuff, and I use it almost as like wetting drops for the paintbrush and the funny thing is if this was water and I took you know I've got s silver metallic paint here on the paintbrush if I dipped it in here in water it would just it would just release everything but it doesn't release any of the color I don't know it's it's like a it's like a magic property I don't know what it is but it works really well and um, it works really well from the standpoint of using it as almost like re-wetting drops so you're paint doesn't dry to your brush and when you go and switch colors you got to go and rinse it out and you know it just kind of makes life a lot easier and that was just kind of an accident I came up with that stuff because it was one of these products that I had bought for use in a mixture a concoction of uh, different materials that this person had recommended in a video about how to make your own airbrush thinner that work really well and you know airbrush thinner happened to be some of the stuff in it but you know there was distilled water and windex and some other weird ingredient as well but it didn't really work out for me the airbrush was sticking too much it was it wasn't a high quality airbrush and I just realized you know what I'm just I don't really need one I don't mind taking a long time to paint things. What I do mind is spending a long time trying to clean an airbrush. Because that's going nowhere. And you have to do that in the garage where it's nice and hot. Who wants to do that? Not this guy. Where do I get my uniform colors from? You mean for this army? This one, you just got to pull things out of your, you know... Not a whole lot is known about these guys. So that's one of the one of the things that was like I was excited about building this particular army because I have um, 
my Irish and my Carriage are both armies that are just, most of the troops are just peasants and pretty much wear whatever they had with them. And as such, they have a very irregular, uh, I would say like a bland appearance, but it, um, it's really fun to make them look interesting. And um, that's the problem with um, this book one armies is that they're so early that just nothing's ever known about them. Um, which is the whole reason I really didn't get into them before. You know, they don't have any cool headgear. They don't have any cool armor. You know, the only thing metal on this guy is this sickle sword that he's holding. That's pretty much it. He's barefoot. So, you know, even though I'd be like, hey, this would be okay to paint this army if it was a change. If you're going to paint any of their opponents, they're they're kind of wearing the same stuff too or, or not wearing the same stuff too. So, I don't know. I can't see having a whole bunch of these really early Bronze Age type biblical armies because they just... They're, they're kind of barren looking. You know, there's not much there. So, you know, you got to do a little bit of artistic license, but you can't go hog wild because, you know, colors and stuff like that are expensive. Uh, book or Google? So, um, I've got... Um, I've got the book that, that these figures were based on when they were sculpted, which is called Armies and Enemies of uh, Near East... Ancient, let's see, armies of the ancient Near East. Yeah, armies of the ancient armies, armies of the ancient Near East. It's a book by uh, War Games Research Group. It's been around for forty years, forty-five years, something like that. And that's where all the illustrations come from. That a lot of these figures were sculpted by and that's pretty much it and then you can you know I always google things and you know you got to be careful when you google things because sometimes you'll get you know you'll look up say like Amorite infantrymen and you end up getting a picture of someone who's obviously Egyptian so you got to know a little bit but the google pictures at least what it allows you to do is see different color combinations and you can, see, you can at least look at it and go, you know, that works for me. Or, no, I don't think I'm going to go with whatever that person suggests. So at least you get to see... Uh, you get to see what it looks like before you start putting paint down. And just save you some time so you don't go down a wrong path. But, yeah, I do, I do Google image, image searches a lot. There's one of the coolest things on the Internet. And sometimes what you get is correct. Pinterest is another one that's really good. Sometimes there'll be, uh, not so much for these guys, but like, you know, when I was doing the um, Hungarians, there's a lot of Hungarian knights on Pinterest and stuff like that. And again, you've got to, you know, you might get some Polish knights in there instead. You kind of have to know what you're looking at. But there's good stuff on that as well. Between those, those two things, you're going to get better illustrations than you are in really in any book. But you got to know what you're looking at. You can't just go, oh, okay, well, this is what, you know, this is what a Polish infantryman look like. Dude, that's obviously samurai, you know. <laughs> you kind of have to have a clue what you're looking at. And then, you know, some people have nefariously... put digital copies of... Just about every Osprey book. You could find a good good chunk of Osprey books put illegally on the internet. Um, I guess there's just so many of them because they don't put a stop to it, but um, there's a lot. So. Because they're on there, you can get you have access to the color plates that come with them. But 
Pinterest is actually really good too. Now, if you were doing stuff like, I think you do Napoleonics, there's all kinds of Napoleonic information online. Well, when I started doing this ancient stuff around 2004, you know, yeah, there was an internet, but not like it is now. So, you know, you had to get the books. Well, you don't have to get them, but I didn't want to spend a couple hundred hours painting something and then realize, oh, if I would have only known this, that, or the other, then I would have painted them differently. Yeah, I don't want to find that out after I'm done with a bunch of figures. I don't want to paint them twice. All right, now let's paint this guy's shield. And I gotta remember how to do the this mix that I did yesterday. So we're gonna grab U.S. Field Drab, I believe is what it's called. It's hanging out right here. getting hard to find a spot with nothing on it. There's actually, uh, if you do Napoleonics, there's actually, you're probably already aware of this, but there is a... Um, there's a magazine that I had a couple of copies of it way back when, because believe it or not, I had actually gotten some Napoleonic figures. I don't know how long ago it was when I got them. Probably 90, 1997, something like that it was a while ago. Never did anything with them. I painted up, um, I was painting Prussians, 1813 Prussians. <clears throat> and I had bought two packs of, I want to say they were battle honors, Prussian infantry and some artillery and um, and I just painted up a, a handful of figures never did anything with them but I had gotten the Osprey Prussian books which I'm not sure what illustrator it was but he kind of sucked he wasn't Angus McBride for sure I'm a big fan of Angus Angus's work but anyway I'd gotten these I think two or three Osprey books I forget which one it is and never did anything with the figures and um, and I don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> I, um, I was a lead into something else, but oh well, I'll think about it in a little bit. Oh, but there was a um, so there was this magazine that I came across with I, I across in in a um, I want to say it was in a hobby store called Napoleon. And it had a lot of scenarios that were done in a really interesting way because it mentioned like all the units and the sizes of the how they were and they used little counters so you could almost set up like a like a actual battle and everything. So I ended up giving that to I know Mitch is really big into Napoleonics and he's got a whole bunch of stuff for um, uh, Napoleon's battles I believe is what the name of the rules is yeah. I used to have them too, actually. I uh, just never did anything with them. Yeah, they sold on eBay. They were one of the first things that I sold on eBay back in the early 2000s. And um, I gave him the copies of the Napoleon magazine. He actually had other copies of it as well. But I thought that was a pretty cool magazine. I think it just ran a few years. You know, after a while, it just kind of ran out of material, I would imagine. But um, yeah, it had a lot of really neat scenarios that were based on um, being done that way. What do we got here? Do you ever use Little Big Man Studios for shield transfers? I do. My Russians use the Little Big Man Studios. And I'll tell you something. Um, they, they, they're really, really strange. Day when I got them, I thought they were going to be water slide decals. 
and they're not. They're this weird combination between dry rub and um, they're just really, really strange. And the thing that's really strange about them is they're beautiful. It has nothing to do with that. They're very, very unforgiving. Have you used them before? Have you have you used Little Beg Man Studios before, or you're just asking to see what it's like? Because I can I can walk you through what kind of a, what the experience is with them. Because they definitely they're really humbling for somebody who's done this hobby for like 35 years, and then you have to go back to like almost like being a toddler when you do that. The product is great. I probably won't use them again, and it's not because their product isn't good. Um, they just take away doing the thing I like the most, which is painting shields. Let's see. Let's see if we've got. Yeah, okay, this guy's okay. Maybe a little bit lighter. Yeah, one of the things I like doing the most is painting shields. So if you use shield transfers, you're taking away the thing I like the most. Like, I don't want to prime the figures, you know? Yeah, you used them on Romans and... One does not simply run out of polyhotic content. 30 plus miniature games, yeah. Yeah, it's really weird. And what's really weird about using the, the, the transfers is... Um, is the, the, um, the flags. Now, the flags are beautiful. I probably would use them again for flags. But the flags are really strange because it's just counterintuitive that you're looking at the backside. If they were straight shield water slide decals, I would be more tempted to use them. But you have to cut them out and you have to look at them from the backside so you don't know if they're positioned correctly until it's too late. And, um, and I made them work and I think they turned out really well. I think they're unrealistically good looking. Uh, I think that if you're walking around with shields that look like that, unless you've got Michelangelo on the, uh, unless you're paying Michelangelo to paint your 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 shields, they're not going to look that good. I mean, they don't have those. I mean, they're they're really good looking. Like the detail on, well, like the Russians one I had were really really complicated shields and really really small. They wouldn't never look that that good in real life. But I think they turned out okay. Um, there's a couple things I don't like about it. I don't like the fact that you have to paint the back white. Um, and it would be nice if I could put them on there and then I could adjust them. Um, but once they're done, they're, they're done. I mean, there may be a way to adjust them, but I didn't really look into it. But not according to the instructions, there isn't. And when the flags are neat, but the problem is, is that you have to apply water to it. So you have to apply enough water to get it to release from the backing, but not enough that you're gonna saturate the paper that's underneath it. It's just like this fine balance. It, it turned out okay, but it was, it was, um, it caused stress. It caused stress doing that process. And I did it online. I'm pretty sure that I filmed the, I'm pretty sure I filmed the, the Irish flag, because I've got the uh, my my medieval Irish their flag. I did that online. That one was just that was just live. That was my first experience with doing the the, the flag business, and it turned out okay. And I did several of my Russians also online, but uh, you know, like I admitted, I'm like I, I don't know how this is going to turn out, you know, but. But for the more obscure armies, you just gotta you just gotta invent things. You gotta pull things out of your nether regions. You know the the stuff isn't in, a, available that you're looking for. The information isn't available. What else we got on here? Uh, da -da 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 -da. GMB flags. I don't think I've seen that one. Small models makes them stand out. Peter Hunt, welcome. 
Steve, how are you? I really wonder if ancient armies in the field would have had some neat, colorful shields. Maybe for camp parades, but every day, no. There's got to be a lot of friendly fire or friendly hacking, you know. Um, you know, if you had two civilizations, were significantly different looking from each other. But, you know, if you have, you know, you're, you're going to have, you know, you're going to be uh, killing your own allies at some point. I would imagine. It'd be real easy to confuse the other folks. All right. Get a little bit of white to this. And just do the edge of the shield up here. No, I had this really good idea of how to pattern make this a shield that is in the shape of a goat skin. So I looked up patterns of goat skins from the Middle East and had this idea that that's how it was going to work out and it just didn't pan out. I I had this little design for for it and it just didn't look right. So you have to use somewhere between the you have to use some artistic license sometimes. So Okay, so I think this guy's done. I may end up putting a little stripe or something on him. But this guy's done. Let's put these guys together so we can get kind of an idea of what they look like. Now, these aren't going to be on the same stand. There's there's probably only going to be one of each pose on the stand. There's five stands, so five individual. Um, let's see if we can get the light to cooperate. Now, the shields are purposefully dark because the ground they're going to be on is very light. So, okay, let's just sit these guys off to the side. And number four. All right, let's go ahead and do the capetches first. I'm actually going to knock out both of these before this paint dries out. I mean, I got to remix it again. You doing all right? No? All right, so we're going to grab this. So yeah, my terracotta Chinese have bronze weapons as well. So I made this little kind of mix between the two and was happy how it turned out with them because if I just use straight bronze, it's not going to look right. It doesn't matter if it was accurate, it's just not going to look right to me. do that see I prefer to actually paint one figure all the way through than than dropping them and, and picking them back up because the problem is is that I don't want to scuff up his feet in doing that moving it from one set of fingers to the other Let's see who that is. I think I know who it is from the little icon that I can barely make out. Nope, I was wrong. Uh, like a little McMahon Studio transfers army color information. Yeah, you got to take things from every little bit. There's also um, the old site that they had, the DBA Online, had color mini plates of, like, for instance, how the individual units looked. And you can still find that, even though. It's no longer available. You can still go on Wayback Machine on the, the Internet Archive, and you can find pictures of all that stuff on there. John Carter, my favorite Martian. Evidence seems overwhelmingly for painted shields used on campaign.
favorite Martian sculpting away. I'm going to give green stuff a, a spin again, but I'm just going to be a rank amateur in that. I was really, su I was surprised how unforgiving it was. That kind of surprised me. It surprised me that, um, because it takes quite a bit of time to dry. And like when I was doing the Pope's robes, I needed to do it in several layers because I didn't want to, um, say, put the robe down and try to engrave something in it and push too hard. And then now what do I do? I got to like start over or add more layers to it. I thought it was just kind of, you know, I don't have the skill set yet for it, but I am going to uh, mess with it some more. I certainly have plenty of it. So. Green stuff. And they got, what did I find the other day? Liquid green stuff. What is that? Like gap filling? Like you've got like, say, joints in an Essex elephant. Because the Essex does their elephants in halves, which is really annoying. Uh, thank goodness I'm one with the um, epoxy. But they do their elephants in halves, and then on top of that, you gotta grab, you gotta put their head on the end. So yeah, you. That's super glue doesn't cut that, so. White should be over here. There it is. And well, looks like I got excellent connection. As here's the funny thing is, is when I had that little poor connection, I didn't get disconnected. So the disconnecting doesn't have anything to do with the internet connection speed. So practice makes perfect. That's right. Keep trying. If you give up, you'll never figure it out. Familiarity with the materials. I had no idea you had to wet your fingers. I had no idea. Liquid free, liquid green stuff is like spackle. Okay. Must apply it with like a brush or something like that. You entered my Greek, uh, you entered your Greek Spartan and early Imperial Roman armies in an IPMS, that's right, I know what that is, modeling competition, and took second and third place in 2011. Grouping category, Little Big Man Studio Shields. So, I went to Historicon a couple of years ago, and I figured, well, I'm already going. Maybe I can win a little gift certificate to buy some more things I don't really need. So I entered my figures in a in a painting contest, you know, one of my DBA armies, and I'm never doing that again because I was stressed out about having to pick them out at a certain time, and it was you know were we going to be around or at dinner while the the pickup time was, and you know, and then I go and pick them up, and the guy's like, the guy who doesn't paint wanted to give me pointers why I didn't score better. Well, you sir, you 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 entered too many figures in. I'm like, it's a DBA army. It's only 12 stands. It's not that many figures. And it's like, you know, I don't need this crap from somebody. You know, and they have to worry about it. Like, I don't need 20 bucks that bad. <laughs> so I won't be entering another one of those. I did enter a painting contest many, many years ago. I want to say like 2002. And one of my figures disappeared. One of my, uh, was my, one of my 20 millimeter Germans. They disappeared, so it was a guy with a grenade launcher. Um, use auto body fill it, filler to fill in cracks in Essex elephants or buildings. Easy to sand, takes paint perfectly. Apply with a small hobby trowel. I got a few of those. Maybe like this. Hey, it's even trowel shaped. Or is this a mini hoe? 
<laughs> Micro ho. <laughs> All right, let's put the paint the handle of the capesh of this guy as well. Yeah, I don't need to enter my stuff in the painting contest. I just, as long as I'm happy with how they look like, that's good enough for me. Well, you'll put them on the internet. You'll get a nice comment from somebody who you think's a lot better painter than you are. That's always nice. So. But ultimately, as the painter, what's important is, am I happy with how it turned out? I remember as a kid, I entered this drawing contest. I was like 10 years old, 11 years old, something like that. And my dad was always, my dad and mom were always really proud of this artwork I had done. And I didn't think it was worth a damn. Um, but they always kept bringing it up. Like, oh, I remember that one time that you did this. And I'm like, it's not really wasn't that good. So ultimately, it's important for you to like it. If other people like it as well, well, that's cool. But, you know. You're the one that's going to get discouraged if you don't like it from painting other things. So. I've had people say, you know, you should paint your figures lighter color because they look too dark on the table. Well, the problem is, is you're, play, you're playing in conditions that stink. You know, the lighting I have here is like perfect, like almost like outside daytime light. They look great there. Yeah, you take them in some dark hallway. Yeah, they're not going to look very good. Okay, so we're done with the capeches on both of these guys. Time to do some battle sarongs. Well, this guy we're going to make him. We're going to use kind of a gray color on him. was a lesson I taught my son. Hard work can be recognized even entering a plastic model contest with metal 15 millimeter figures. Did you sort your... You know, I entered... I was a... Way back when I used to do models. And there's people that are master model builders. But I'll tell you what. I think the picture... I think the people that paint miniatures do a better job than models. Because you'll be like guys that... People would, would do these jet planes and they couldn't paint the pilot worth a damn. Did I get my Amorite? Did I sort my Amorite shields out? I did. This is what we decided to go with. Let's see. There we go. They look darker on the picture than they really are but they've got to be kind of a dark color so that they stand out from the ground color that's going to be like this so yeah i'm pretty happy with that you know and i can always repaint them if i don't like it it's it's easy to get to the shields it's not like they're going to be some place on the figure where i'm not going to be able to reach but i had this great idea i was looking up I drew this yesterday. I started to, I, I looked up the description that's armies and enemies of the Near East showed that it was basically goat hide stretch over a frame. The frame was, you know, these shields are pretty square on the miniature. Rectangular, they're pretty rectangular. And the ones in illustration were more almost like an H-shaped. So I looked up um, goat uh, pelts, goat, um, goat skin, okay? And you could actually go and get raw goat skin online. I don't know what the hell for, but um, there was lots of them that had like a dark spot towards the middle where you could tell where these were, you know, the two legs and you know, the... All four legs here were in the corners, and you, they, it was a particular goat that had a, a dark spot through the middle of it. I'm like, well, that already looked look good on the on the on a shield, and um, that was what I tried last night, and I did not like how that turned out. It, you know, in theory, it sounded good, but 
I wasn't able to pull it off. So I kind of went with kind of a nondescript looking thing. I paid for my satisfaction. Competition is too stressful for me to enjoy. I judge my figures by the ones my gaming friends produce. You saw the orange experiment. The orange wasn't the problem. It was the it was the center thing. Because it wasn't like I was, you know, the whole thing was going to be that color. And some of the goat things were that, were similar color to that. But it was the it was the dark across the, it just didn't work out. I'm happy with this. But, and I do realize that they have to be a dark color or they're not going to stand up from the, from the groundwork. They're not going to stand up from the groundwork. And we certainly don't want that. We don't want them to blend in. All right, so we're going to use gray, but then we're going to use, where is the, that SS camo black thing that's just dark brown? We're going to use that as the darkener. The orange experiment. <laughs> were you a member of the orange experiment? Ah, there it is. Here's that mixing ball kicking in. Just he it just had to produce a one forty eighth of a horsepower to get it moving. Oh, this isn't working out too well. Where is uh, where's my needle? You got to be careful with needles. You might poke yourself. But what you got to be careful with is pushing on the end of the needle. You're going to put that right through your finger. And this is the blunt end. All right, now let's put this down. There we go. Might do the brown and ochre variant of the cow pattern on some Trojans. Yeah, I think it would work. I just didn't want the whole, the Holstein cow thing. I've got zebra shields on one of the first armies that I painted. They have zebra shields, my fanatic Berbers. It turned out pretty well. All right, what was I going with that? Oh, this guy was going to have the, the gray pants. The gray, not pants. Battle sarong. All right, where did I put the gray? This is a sign that I've got too many colors here. I know I pulled it out. There it is, it's over here. I'm just gonna paint all this. In this color. I can't do anything about that. Hmm? Okay. Sorry. APMS, you are blind to the judges. The room is locked out and you don't know who judged your model. I saw some original Minoan art which illustrated the use of these cow skins. No one does giraffes. <laughs> Russell, welcome. Looking forward to the Amorites. Me too.
You out of here? Sorry. Get, get a blanket. No, you've had enough of my monologue. <laughs> oh, well. Yeah, it's, I try to keep it as cold as I can in this room. I'm always hot, so. I was the wife that wanted to hear what a crazy person sounds like talking to themselves. Hey, I got nothing to hide. I act the same way around her than when she's not around, so. Well, it looks like you got plenty of company. Tomorrow be... <laughs> Tomorrow beckons. Good night. Oh, good night, man. Continue to keep on keeping on. Yeah, company is important because otherwise, well, that's why I do this. I'm sure you guys aren't sitting there watching me just sitting in the TV eating popcorn. You're probably doing your own hobby stuff, which is exactly what I used to do. Um, but what I would find is, is that um, if I'm watching somebody, not that I suggest that you do this, but something will happen and I'll be like, well, you know, there are other things I could watch. So I end up doing channel surfing and the next thing you know, 35 minutes goes by. I'm trying to find the perfect thing to listen to and I end up getting nothing done. So this forces me to stay on task and at least do this. I mean, hell, it's not even eight o'clock in the morning and in, in the evening. And, um, okay. So we've got this color here. We're going to go ahead and it's kind of has a brownish color and that's, that's okay. We're going to go ahead and add and start lightening this up a little bit. But that's what would happen is I would just try to find the perfect thing to listen to. And the problem is, is there's very few things that I could do on YouTube that I don't want to look at the screen. Because if it, if it, you know, I, I, I got a TV in this room. I don't want to put a movie on it because I have a hard time wa listening to a movie if there's something to watch. So if there is a picture present, even though I'm not watching it, I'm still being I'm still being distracted by the fact that I'm not seeing the whole picture. But if it's like a podcast or something like that, yeah, then that's fine, but this is like the best thing I can do to stay on track and you know, we got to get these guys done so that we can start working on the next army. Cuz I'm already fascinated about what the next two armies could possibly be. So I mean, I'm only interested in about 300 other armies, so I know this really didn't narrow it down. And I've got to go to little boy's room. And let's do one thing here. And I will be right back.
Okay, we're back. Uh, what question do you have? What would you do? Would you do a mix of shield colors or are you just doing all the same? So my initial thought was, and I mentioned this on one of the, on one of the discussions I was having. So this particular army has five units of fast blade. So that's 15 figures, five stands of three figures each. And um, it was, uh, and then it's also gonna have two stand, this is talking about figures that have shields. And then, um, and then two stands of uh, solid auxilia that also have shields. So what I was thinking of is do, you know, before I actually did any of the shields, I was thinking, you know, I could just do all of the blades in a grayish type pattern, gray themed, so to speak, you know, black, black and white, and then gray goats, and then do the brown ones for the auxilia, the solid auxilia. That's what I was thinking I was going to do. But after I did what I was doing, I don't think that brown would actually work because it's going to be too similar to their skin color. And it's going to be because, you know, we've got, you know, they're, they're relatively dark skinned. I want their, the shields to kind of pop a little bit. And it, I, I want it to pop from the ground cover as well. So I think what I'm going to do is... I'm going to go with this type of a scheme for all of the um, of, of the fast blades and the auxilia. I'm probably not going to put shields on them because, and I'll show you the figure. The figure is actually really, really cool looking, but it actually has optional shields. It's just kind of a rarity for Essex. Let me show you one of the figures. They almost look Assyrian-like in a way. And it has a separate shield that you can put them on there. So I think I'm just not going to give them shields. And and call it a day. Because I don't want to give them the same type of color shields. I don't know. I'll figure it out when I go. You know, I'm, I'm going to do these fast blades. All 15 figures. We'll base them all. And then I'll know what the right decision is when I come and look at that. But that's initially what I was thinking of. I was going to do a a brown base one and a black or gray base one but it just didn't work out you know sometimes you just have to have a flexible plan you know um the first shield that i did last night just i i i knew what i wanted to do i just it just didn't turn out right you know um so occasionally that actually is a that actually doesn't happen that often to me that I don't like how something turns out, but it's easy enough to fix. Um, I paint really thin, so it's not like I'm covering up details. It's not like we're using testers paint, testers or Pactra paint and using one of those nylon brushes, you know, so it's forgiving. That I find an equid platform cart. I can't remember. I decided not to go with that. I went with a, um, with the light chariot. The light chariot is the one actually that comes with the, um, with the uh, the DBA army pack, and I wanted a guy that I wanted someone that had a freaking helmet. So this is the figure that's going to be the the general. It's gonna be the only guy that's wearing armor and a helmet. It's this guy right here. And it's a it's just a standard. Essex little light cherry. It's the only mounted element in the whole army. And we'll have to find a way to fit it on a 40 by 40 stand. But I've done chariots before. And actually the first time I did chariot, it was a, it was a hit. So I got a clue. And I was successful with a clue that I had. So yeah, it should fit on here just fine. With the chariots, it's a bigger send that it sticks out off the front of the chariot than off the back. Because the back's only a problem if you if you have somebody behind them. But the, having somebody in the front that doesn't fit is a bigger issue because they're, they're going to go into combat. Yeah. 
Okay, so this is going to sit something like like so. And I'm going to I put reins on my chariots. It's not that big a deal. But I mark everything where everything is. I paint the horses separately. I glue the horses down. I do goop all the way around them. Leave a little spot for this for the where the wheels go. Then I'll glue the wheels on. Glue the passengers on the on the chariot, and I don't like them having a base on them. I, I'm particular about that. Um, next, Vlad Tempe's probably. I, he's probably going to be next. Yeah, and I already have a figure that looks just like him. It's an Essex figure. That's another army that's completely Essex figures. You know, I'm actually not a huge fan of Essex miniatures, but they, they paint okay. They paint up all right. Uh, I don't like Essex because a lot of their figures look like the same. They're not like, you don't get excited to paint more because it's just kind of, the, they all have the same type of look. Um, I don't know if that makes any sense. But um, but yeah, and, and we're going to put reins on here. And I've got to look at some contemporary, some pictures of how the reins are set up. Because I think that if they tie into the actual horse here at the, is it the bridle that's over by his by his mouth? then I'm gonna drill a hole through his mouth and we'll feed him through there. But, you know, I have a guy that's holding the reins and you drill out his hand and you run this stuff through it. I've done it before and it wasn't that, it sounds really finicky, but I tell you what, the last the last one I did, I did before I, I was doing things without my glasses on, so I can certainly handle it now. Look at this guy. I need some kind of a background focus, damn it. Yeah, so it's this hand that's going to have everything fed through it. It shouldn't be a whole lot. It should be a string that goes through here, and it might go between both horses then come back, or I don't know if it's four. Four strings may be a little bit too much to ask. I'll just have to look at it, but um, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. So I didn't want to use a platform cart. Um, I was going to leave those platform carts for... Because they could use both. I think early on, later on, they started going to these type of... Um, these type of chariots. My only gripe with the chariots is all the Essex chariots are the same, whether they're Egyptian or Hittite or whatever. If they're a, if they're a light chariot type thing, they're all the same design. So, yeah, Blood Tempest, they got to be next because we got this. We got cool stuff to do with him. We got this castle, this cool castle to do for him. We've got. That's the wrong one. That's the furniture one. We got to bring out your dead. That's going to be my camp. My camp is going to be just a bunch of people with a stick through them, impaled. And these are impaled correctly. They're impaled, uh, you know, through the backside. They're being juiced. So... Good stuff. Looking forward to doing that. Get a few laughs. It's all fun and games until you're the one being impaled. So, and it's a wimpy army. And wimpy armies are a lot of fun to play. As long as you're playing against somebody else that also has wimpy armies. So... Speaking of Essex, have I heard anything about CMB lately? Well, somebody notified me like three weeks ago that they were going to stop their mail order business because of some health issues. They didn't mention who had the health issue or what it was. But, you know, that sucks because I was just finding it really convenient to order three and four. See, I got to order from somebody that I can get three or four packs. I'm never going to like be able to like order across the pond $200 worth of figures. I, I don't need $200 worth of figures. Um, I, I've got plenty to, to start and it's, you know, other things that I may need on there. So, you know, I'll probably have to buy them individually from um, Noble Knight or somebody like that. I didn't have a good experience with Noble Knight last time, but maybe not them. The, uh, the issue got resolved, but it wasn't resolved by Noble Knight. So, um, 
There's another guy that has a ton of figures. Prolific. He sells them prolifically on eBay. And I think I know who he is. Um, but um, but his prices aren't very good. But he does have a lot of figures that aren't available anymore. But yeah, Vlad's probably going to be next. Otherwise, I why did I bother reading that book about him? Which kind of sucked. It was convenient for sure. It was. Well, I'm... I, I kind of made it a point not to order one pack of stuff because it basically they marked up their price and said shipping's included. But you know when they ship them over here, it cost them like four bucks to ship it. You could tell by in the package. So you know the guy's trying to make a living too. But um, I actually did order only only one pack when I had to reorder the thing that he sent me wrong. So I ordered I ordered some stuff and he sent me one of the packs incorrectly, and then I'm like. Um, don't refund me the money and send it to me for free. I'll just order the other one again. But, you know, I needed to get the right figures. That was the crossbowman from the, the papal army. It turned out fine. But I don't know whether it, um, what exactly the issue is. But hopefully they get it resolved. But they said they were still going to cons. So maybe they just wanted to get out of mailing it to people. I, I, I'll be honest with you. I, I, I don't want to mail anything to anyone ever again. That goes through the post office? Forget that. That is just a miserable place. The post office here in the United States is a miserable place to go to. And even more so now. You know, with everybody having to stand away from each other. And it's just... I don't like going there. I can only go during my lunch hour. And I call that holy hour. So I certainly don't want to do anything unpleasant during that time. But... I just don't like DBA Army packs. You know... They have enough different figures that I can I can mix and match and be happy with what I pick out. But I don't want some some guy in the back room picking out who I'm going to paint. You know, I want to paint who I want to paint. Okay, so let's lighten this up a tiny little bit. And then we'll be done with this color, which was about right here, right? Yeah. The one I haven't heard from, so, you know, so you can't order from CMB Miniatures, mail order, okay, but you can still get Essex figures, right? So, not a huge loss. I mean, yes, I might take it in the shorts on shipping, but I can at least get the figures. The one that really disturbs me is um, the John Roberts that was running um, uh, Roundway. I haven't heard about from him in a long time, but... His, he was having some kind of health issues before the pandemic. I, I'm not sure how old he is or what his health situation is, but he had um, he had some kind of health issues, and, and I don't know exactly what they are. I want to say he told me one time, and and I don't remember what it is. And something art, like arthritis or something like that. I don't think anything that was, um, um, was going to kill him. But uh, it just made him difficult to, to do it. He was doing it on the side. So um, the communication just wasn't good with him. So, you know, you'd send an order in and he was already working on it, but he wouldn't tell you. And then you were like, hey, let me get an update. And you wouldn't respond. And you're like, did I just piss my money away? And, and he, he was fine. I, I wanted to, you know, I wanted him to be a little bit more successful because I, I, like I like his figures a lot. And he's the only person you can get the round way figures from. And... Um, I think I've heard some other people that wanted to do business with him and, and they weren't successful in, in, in getting him to, to, to send the product out to him. So it just makes me a little sad because I, I definitely want him to be successful. I, I love those roundway figures. I like these old school figures. So, all right, we're going to do red trim on this guy. But anyway, CMB, in the, in the, it's on their webpage. They said that they basically weren't going to do mail order anymore. But they'd still attend the big cons. So, like I said, I don't know. I don't know what's going on there, but. Oh, well. Every company seems to have issues. I had a, what, what was the other problem I had an issue with? A long time ago, I ordered from minifigs and had a hell of a time getting figures from them. 
and getting an answer. Just just give people an answer. Just say, hey, listen, thanks for the order. I got your money. I'm going to be working on it. But if, if you send out an order and you don't hear anything back, you're wondering, is there anyone there? You know, um, you know, it's not like I need to have this stuff out in a week, but I'd like to know that at least somebody's working on it. Because if there's no one there on the other end, then I'll just order them from another source. So... Just let people know that you got their order. So. The people that used to have Roundway before was Navvor. And Navvor is the wackiest thing I've ever heard of before. I never ordered, well, I would never order from them if that's how they operate. But, you know, you couldn't use a credit card. Oh, no, wait. You couldn't call them. They were in the UK. They were only open for a very little amount of time. You had to send them a fax. I'm not sending a fax to the UK. I have no idea what that what that's going to cost or how to even do that. Like, just take an internet order. Oh, we don't do stuff over the internet. Why not? Or we don't take PayPal. You could pay me with PayPal, and, and I don't know how to run a business. Well, I don't know how to do all the tax crap. You know, I would never own a business just from all the tax tax calisthenics that you have to do that just that pissed me off <laughs> it's bad enough that you have to try to do you know money in money out turn a profit you know pay yourself kind of stuff but then you've got to you know well they just changed the law well i gotta hire a you know i gotta hire an attorney so you can tell me what the hell is written in because nobody can understand you know i'm like uh, i'm not owning my own business sorry um but so you could run your own business but you can't take paypal payments that just doesn't make any sense you know, or the people that say, well, we don't take PayPal because it costs us money. I get it. So mark your things up 10%. You know, I can't be the only person that wants to pay for the items immediately so that you can start working on shipping them to me. There was, a, there was a vendor that was at the first Historicon I went to in 2006. They're not around anymore, but they were saying, yeah, I could mail order this and I can mail order that. I said, okay, well, how do I do that? I said, well, you got to, here's our order form, and you fill it out and you put it in the mail. Like, oh, st I'm going to stop you right there. Uh, I don't buy stamps. <laughs> I'm not going to mail some mail orders, mail something through you know, wait several days for you to get it to possibly start working. I'm not. And it's like, well, can I, how do I pay credit card? No, I can take a check though. I'm like, that makes no sense. You told me my nav, nav war story. No, I don't think you did. I'd love to hear it, but you got to type a bunch of stuff. I don't need to torture you for that, but um, it doesn't, some people just don't want to run a business. That, that's okay. You know, but I just don't understand the whole PayPal thing. Like you can pay me and this was a long time ago. You can pay me through PayPal and yes, PayPal takes some of your money. Okay. So mark your things up 15%. Well, they take out 10. Good. You're making 5% more. That's how you turn a profit. You were in the shop and the guy convinced me not to buy stuff. I'm a fucking communist. <laughs> Fine. I'll steal it then. <laughs> Some people just. I don't know. People are just weird. People are weird. And don't get me wrong. I am probably the most. If you've ever met me, I'm the most unsalesy person you'll meet. Okay? Like, I. I firmly stand behind all the stuff that I say. Hey, this is good. This isn't good. But. It, it's just easy being honest. I, I, I couldn't be a car salesman and sell a brand that I couldn't, that I didn't believe in. But convinced you not to buy anything. I, I just, what are you there for? You know? I, I don't know. And it's not a British American thing. I'll be honest with you. I've done a lot of business with people over across the pond. You know, that part of Mars where you're from, right? I've had better service from people in the UK. 
than people in the U.S. Um, that doesn't mean everybody in the U.S. sucks, but generally the people in the U.K. Um, are more competent, ship your order out quicker, except no. Museum miniatures, he gets stuff out in no time. Essex ships things really quick. Um, who else have I done stuff out there with? I can't remember, but a lot, because that's the land of toys, right? And, um, you know, so it's not a, all Americans are this or UK or that. Eh, I've actually had better service from, from the UK people than US stuff. I went all the way to East London, East London, okay, uh, on a bus from Camden, came out with nothing. I don't know. What is it? A front for heroin or something like that? Don't buy any lead. We need to keep it in the store so it looks like we're we're actually doing a miniatures business, but we're actually in, you know, we're actually uh, selling drugs. <laughs> the guy's weird. I read the instructions. Well, I've never met the guy, but I look at his instructions. You know, we don't take credit cards. You can't call us. We can't take orders over the phone. You have to fax your credit card information, which sounds super risky, okay? Um, and even if it wasn't risky, what if he understands your card number wrong and you never get charged for it and never works on your order? And then it's only like a window of like, what, like two hours a day or something like that? I'm like, get out of here, you know? <laughs> and it's a shame because... They still have a lot of stuff that's really neat. Well, there's one particular per, there's one particular kind of miniatures that are in the UK that I've never ordered before that have been on my radar for a long time, and um, and it's a company called Tumbling Dice, and they make a lot of twenty four hundred scale pre dreadnought ships, which actually look pretty cool. Um, what else do they make? They make twenty millimeter World War One figures. That I really like the style of. I'm not getting those, okay? Because, I, you know, even if I snap my fingers and they got painted, I'd never get around to find the motivation to play the game. But um, but the naval stuff, that's what I started with. and um, But I haven't ordered from them before. But. Yeah, now that's weird. Just really weird. So. I've, I first saw Roundway figures uh, with a company called The Last Square. They were in Wisconsin. And I don't know whether they were, their, they were the distributor for Roundway in the United States, but they were at Historicon, I want to say, in 2010 and 2011. They're now gone out of business, I understand. And I, I don't know if they're tied in with Noble Knight, but it's really coincidental that both of those places are very close to each other. So there might be some carryover between ownership of one or the other. But maybe they're not. But it just kind of just seems suspect of what, of what it was. But uh, So I'd go to Historicon and I picked up a few roundway here and a few roundways there. That's the first time that I saw them. And um, at some point they said they were like discontinuing their carrying them or something like that. So I made, I phoned them and I asked them what they had. And the guy was like, not telling me, he's like, I'm, I can't, I don't have time to tell you what I have in stock. And I'm like, well, how the fuck am I supposed to order them then? You know? And it was like, well, I don't know. It just, I don't know. When I grew up and I worked retail before and people say retail job is bad. Yeah. It may not pay well. I don't think a retail job is a bad job, but when I worked retail, you know, your customer comes in and they want a product. You try to find it for them. Not like, I don't know where it is. And then, you know, go back to surfing on your phone, you know. Um, but that's, that's I think, one of the reasons why all these Roundway are, Roundway are small. No, no, they're not. Uh, they go with Essex, yeah. Yeah, they do. They're similar to, um, they're similar to Old Glory. And, um, yeah, I really like them. I, I really like them. They have, uh, they, I, so my Turks, I, I have some of them in my Turks and they're about the same size. You know what? Essex are smaller. They're, uh, they're more like old glory sized. So, but you know, I mix all kinds of stuff. I'll use a, I'll use a, a round way horse with a mini figs figure and that's more variety. 
but you know, when I work retail, you know, people ask you where something is, you got to find out, not like, I don't give a shit where it is. I mean, dude, that's what you're being paid for, you know, and, and it makes your day go by quicker if you're helping people out. Think about it that way, you know, I understand you don't want to be at your job, but the easiest way to, to make it easier is make your day go by quick. So you need to stay busy, not like, well, I'm not going to do anything. But that's why those retailers, you go to stores. I don't even like going to stores now because that seems like everybody that works at a store doesn't know jack shit and doesn't want to find out anything for you. So, I don't know. Water for Amazon and get it tomorrow. <laughs> and don't burn gas going from store to store looking for it. They still exist. Noble Knight does carry 1,000 scale ships that are made by Last Square. Yeah, that's the, they also imported those things as well, the Hallmark one. I got my eye on some Falcon figs, Egyptians. They're small. I do have some Falcon figures. Um, yeah, I've got some Arab Falcons. So the guy that was, um, the Falcons in 15, I understand that the guy that got them was a guy named Kai Weaver. And he had a business here in the United States in Virginia. I think he's somewhere in Virginia. And he came to actually to one show in Florida, which is kind of strange. And, um, and he had just come out with some new Arabs, um, Arab figures. And they look really good. I picked a pack of each, which is what I normally do because I like the mix and match things. And I'm glad I did because they just disappeared. And I know he had either he had some health issues or somebody in his family had health issues. But... He's kind of out of the market and disappeared. Lots of people were, you know, asking for him and he doesn't turn up. So hopefully he's doing okay. But he did come to Florida. And um, yeah, but some of the older Falcon stuff, they're pretty small. Used to work in retail. Day really goes quick when you chat to people. It does. And when you help people out, you know, that's ultimately what you want. You want to, you know, you, you want to do, well, I want to do a good job, you know, and you want the day to go by quick. You know, at least the next 17 years can go by quick. Then then it can go really slow. <laughs> if you do the math, what happens in about 17 years for me? 17, 18, something like that. I don't think I'm going to be one of those people. I'm retired and I don't have anything to do. Well, I got plenty to do. I'm still going to have some of this paint to do. And um, I'm not worried about eyesight. I just don't, hopefully I don't get the shakes. Uh, I don't need that. I got, I got too many things to get done. We've got too many plans to do. But that's the main thing. If you guys are in retail, if you're selling figures as a consumer, let people know within one day that you got their order. You don't have to give them an ETA when it's going to get there. Just, hey, listen, I got your order. Thanks for the order. I'm working on it. That's it. Now, if you don't hear from them in a freaking month, yeah, maybe you probably need to communicate with them again. But, you know, you just don't. That's, that's the problem with ordering things through snail mail. You, you send it in, and who knows if the post office even gets the order to them. And if they do get the mail to them, how long before they open it? And then how long before they do something with it? You know, so... Um, yeah. All right, we're going to call this guy. Hey, look at that happy pattern he's got. That's the pattern we're going to go with him. Now, we're going to give this guy some brown hair. Let's get Leo Chocolate Brown out. Yeah, people say retail, but retail isn't, you know, the problem is, is customers. Some customers just can't be made happy, you know, but I don't think retail is that bad. The food industry would be bad. I, I can't imagine working in the food industry. I've never had to, fortunately, but. Like at a fast food restaurant. I mean. They've changed a lot in 30 years. I, I, I don't even want to go in those places. 
Even if they do want a large drink there, Rick. There he is, large drink Rick. We got a 30-day sabbatical as a benefit with PayPal. You didn't capitalize PayPal. You're fired. (laughs) On top of our time off. And it always disappoints me when I hear someone say that they were bored the whole time and glad to be back at work. That's a sick bastard. Yeah. You're bored the whole time. Well, you know, a lot of people that don't have a hobby, what do they do all day? Do they watch TV? TV is a massive waste of time. It is a massive waste of time. Um, I can't stand it. You know, video games, at least you're making decisions. You know, especially if you're playing one of those open, what do you call them? Those open, um, not open range, open world games or whatever. You're doing a mission, you got to walk your little ass from a certain or drive from one place to another. And you'll see something off in the distance and I wonder what's up in that house. Well, just walk your ass up there and get it. Now, if there's a troll and he eats you, well, you won't do that again. You can just reboot, but... um, yeah, now those video games where it's like you got to jump across this thing and you die 27 times. Yeah, count me out. I don't do jumping games. Uh, physical stores are obsolete. Online offers so much more. Curacao Miniature notifies you when you order. I've not ordered from Curacao yet. They showed up too late. I, I will. I, I've got something that's on the on the books for them. Specifically for them. Uh, it may not be a big order, but I got a couple of things that'll come from them. I just don't need to get it now because it's just going to sit here. But um, they just showed up too late. They showed up 10 years too late. I already had collected too much stuff. Um, although a lot of their ranges that I've seen are all over the place. Some of the ranges are really cool and some of them, the horses are too long. But it doesn't bother me too much because I've got extra horses. I could just replace them, you know. Um, yeah. PayPal gave you what? Gave everybody 30 days off? 30 days sabbatical is a benefit with PayPal on top of our time off. What? Get out of here. Now, what's the sabbatical? You get paid or you just get 30 days off, no payment? They have some unique figure lines. They do. They do. I I really don't like it when you hear it's like, hey, there's a new 15 millimeter figure manufacturer. Awesome. What do they make? Romans. Really? Everybody makes Romans. But then you think, you know, they got to get their foot in. They don't want to do the something really weird and nobody buys them. So... Now, I'll be honest with you. When the girls go out of town for like a week, I'm loving like the first weekend day. And then after the second weekend day I have by myself, basically I can do whatever the hell I want. And there's no hurry to do it. I'm like ready to come back because I want some order and some structure, but I'm never ready to go back to work. <laughs> yeah, 30 days paid off, but only once every five years. I'm a few years away from my second Wow, I've never gotten that. I've never gotten that, and I've worked. I'm on my 27th year, and I've been maxed out on vacation days for 10 years. About 10 years, I can't get any more vacation days. But it's all right. I'm not going to complain, you know, because you know when I go on vacation, I got to leave everything done, and it's a freaking mess when I come back. So, you know. At least I don't think about my job when I'm not there. So, a sabbatical and PayPal. 
Yeah, I don't get messed. People above my pay grade don't really mess with me on a daily basis. So that's worth something too, you know. But, you know, you got to bust your hump so, so they'll leave you alone, you know. It's like. But you're working from home these days, right? You're not going to get any sympathy from me. That's what I hear. I'm working from home, and I'm so tired of working from home. I'm work. I want to go in the office. You're a dick. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I would just like to work one day from home in twenty-seven over twenty-seven years. I'd like to work from home one day. What's that like to be able to wear, say this? You know, uh, keep the temperature, whatever the hell I want. If it, you know, I not like I want to sit around and you know not get anything done or be drunk or something like that. I'm just, I'd like to be comfortable all day. Yeah, you work from holding types. I'm not going to get any sympathy from me saying, Oh, it's, I'm so bored sitting at home. I want to sit in traffic for two hours. It's not fair. <laughs> oh, man. Chris Hans started off with many lines other than Romans. Yeah, they did. They started off with Cursanian figures, hence their name. He just started releasing various Romans from different periods. Still from home to at least second quarter 2022. That's crazy. How much money, how much money you're saving not having to commute? Oh, well. I'll say one thing, though. I have a job that didn't change hardly at all because of the pandemic. So what I, what I was doing and what I was restricted to before the pandemic... And what the restrictions are now are basically no difference. So I'm not like one of these people that, oh, well, before I could do this. And now we have to do this, that, and the other, and this other thing, and something else, you know. So the pandemic hasn't made my job more difficult. So there's one thing I told my daughter. is like, yeah, you need to figure out where you're going to need to go to school. But you need to, you need to figure out that during this pandemic, who didn't lose their job? And who's pain in the ass of work didn't really change because of it. Because I am sure that there will be more of these type of things the rest of my life. I will guarantee that this is just the tip of the iceberg of pain in the ass, scares or whatever for the rest of, of my life on this earth. I don't see any reason that that's gonna change. So, you know, figure out who didn't, you know, um, who still was, um, had a job like, for instance, don't go and uh, you know work at a movie theater, <laughs> you know. But uh, <laughs> with an hour round trip commute to the office, I'm definitely happy at home. Plus, I can pop a load of laundry in, sign for package. Yeah, no, exactly, no, definitely, and it's good for the environment, and it's good for your pocketbook. You know, you're not putting miles on your Bronco that you don't have yet. <laughs> That's what it is. That's why you don't have your Bronco. See, they, they know that you don't really need it. So they just got moved down the queue. You know, people that are actually need it for transportation are going to get it first. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, hopefully they'll realize, hey, why are we have all these people working in this office? We could just have them work from home, but... There's control freaks out there that definitely want you in the office. They don't want you working from home and having fun. But, you know, there's some people out there that you want to go in the office so they could socialize with other people they work with. I just want to do my job and go the frick home, you know? <laughs>
So like I said, at least my job really didn't change at all because of it. Let's see what we got here. Let's put him with the other folks here, so we could kind of compare. Which one? Now, which one is he? Oh, this one here. All right, let's do his shield now too. We got some other things. Let's see, <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, work at home. Get to go to work at a hospital every day and deal with freaking too many COVID payments for patients for the last month. Look forward to retiring as soon as I can. I would too. That's a pain in the ass, man. Sorry about that. You retired a year and a half before COVID, so I didn't have to deal with it. You're lucky. Yeah. Speaking of vehicles, that channel doing the races and demo derby you promoted is super cool. That guy's brilliant. That guy's talented. He he is that guy is so much more talented than just about anybody else on YouTube. It, it's amazing. He can't paint worth a damn, but that's okay. His videos are spectacular. It's better than stuff on television. And uh, so professional, amazing editing. I have to be careful, or I'm going to get addicted. It, it's it's hilarious. It's absolutely hilarious. And uh, you know, he lives in California. If he lived in Florida, I'd be like, hey, dude, listen, um, I paint figures and you guys in your crowd could look better. I'll paint some figures for you, you know. But um, so supposedly he's the one, he's doing everything himself. He uh, he's doing both voices, which is kind of disappointed me. I was hoping it was it was because it means it's really, really fake. But it's really, really entertaining. <laughs> It's really, really entertaining. Um, yeah, the demo is... The quality of those demo videos... It's amazing. That's better than most things on television. Yeah. 3D Bot Maker. Diecast Racing. And people think that's stupid. Well, not the way he does it, it isn't. And it's okay to get addicted to that, Rick, because it's free. It's a free addiction. <laughs> no harm. Okay. Now, speaking of addicted, I uh, went into a different direction here. Here we go. Let's get... Um, where is that U.S. drab color? Here. All right. We're going to need to put some more of that stuff out. He does do both voices. Yep. Yeah. Notice they don't talk over each other. He's got a voice changer. And he still makes a couple mistakes. He'll call one driver one thing and then he'll call him somewhere else. But, you know, that guy's brilliant. That, that's a lot of edited. It's, I mean, I've edited videos. I know how much time he's, he's you know... I know how much time he spends on it. History shows pandemic will always be with you. Well, this is the first one of my lifetime. Free just like you offered. No, my, my stuff sucks compared to his. Well, he's a lot more entertaining than I am. Like I said, he can't paint worth a damn, but, you know, it, it's okay. We don't all have the same skill set. You know, he's, like, really good at technology stuff. I'm not, you know. Uh, I don't like technology because they always keep changing it. But as soon as you figure out how to do something, I'm like, oh, we don't do that anymore that way. We do it like, okay, listen, I'm tired of this move the football crap, you know. Um... It's just like a phone. Like, why even read the manual how to use it? By the time you figure it out, there's another phone. 
You know, they keep moving the football. Let's just paint this whole thing in this color here. So if you haven't watched a lot of his stuff, Rick, go look, go back on his past tournaments and watch his Ferrari tournament. Just watch that. You know, the nice thing is, is his videos are only 10 to 20 minutes long. I don't think any of them are even 20 minutes long. So you could digest them in small portions. But, you know, his, his videos are just like a, my DBA games and that. The, some of the craziest stuff happens and you wouldn't believe it unless you saw it on video um, but there's all kinds of crazy stuff that ha stuff that happens and uh, yeah it's just hilarious it's absolutely hilarious he's mega talented I think you I think his background was some kind of a media thing anyway so it's it's a, it's really easy for him to do that but yeah, definitely, definitely the best, the best quality of stuff on any channel I subscribe to on YouTube. Well, I mean, easily, not even close. <sighs> Last 80 years have been unusual as far as pandemics, advances in medical science have done this, but nature, one human intervention has given us this one. Tired of the stress, need to get painting again. Your videos get me motivated when I can just find worn out lately when I get home nowadays. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I would not want to work at a hospital. You don't see anything good there. It's like being a cop. Everything you encounter is always a problem. You know, and some people, you know, some people have a different personality type for different things. I'm, you know, I wouldn't do well in one of those things, in those environments. I, I think I wouldn't do well. Let's put it that way. And it's really hard to work at something where I think that no matter how hard you work, it just feels like you're not really making a difference. And, and there's, I think, a lot of jobs that are that way. We're not going to talk about jobs, though. Screw that. This is a job-free uh, uh, place. <laughs> but yeah. I think I need to make it make another mix of this stuff because I didn't I think I didn't put enough paint in there to get it going in the right direction. And we make mistakes on this channel, but I, we also fix them. So, you know, you'll watch other people like, man, that guy never makes any mistakes. Ah, he's fooling you. He's no messiah.
now. We lighten this one up. No, we need to lighten up a little more on that. Make sure it's not very, it's not dull. You know, I can always tinker with this one when they're all together. Because we're going to have, before I seal any of these, we're going to have 15 of these figures. So it's real easy to just say, okay. Um, and that's I had to do that with the um, with my papal spearmen, with the crosses. You know, one, a couple of crosses didn't look consistent enough. So I tinkered with them until they did. Until I was happy with how they turned out. <laughs> What other armies do you have to fight your new Amorites? I have none. I have none. This is my only book one army that I have. So what happened is, is um, my buddy Joe ended up building a... Um, there were some new figures that he wanted to get from um, Museum. He came, they came out with some Sumerian figures. And he wanted to do uh, the Akkadian army and also the third dynasty of Ur army. And in doing so, uh, he ended up getting some figures from Essex. And I saw these figures, and I really kind of fell in love with them and wanted to do an army based on them. And the figure in question are these ones that I'm going to use for the auxilia with, that come with the separate shields. And these guys have been around forever, and they're, they're probably... Nobody would give them a second look. But it's, it's hard to get excited about figures of this early a time period for me because... A lot of them don't have any headgear. Well, these guys do, and I like the pose and, you know, and so forth. So I found out what they are. They're Amorite Spearmen. So I'm like, okay, well, what armies can I use to, to build with these guys? And there was a later Amorite army. And I looked at the troop composition. And I'm like, well, this is kind of interesting. A lot of fast blades, so let me do that. So, yeah, the rest is history. That's why I decided to do these guys. But, um... Mitch has a lot of armies that we could probably morph in them, but um, yeah, that's the only reason I picked these guys. They're they're not very exciting in that they don't have a lot of headgear or cool uniforms or or neat shields or anything that would normally draw me to to build this kind of an army. Uh, they have none of those things, so that's kind of unusual that I would have even done them to begin with. Um, because I'm not one of those people that like, well, let me paint those guys. Why? Because they're easy to paint. Well, there's your reason for me not to paint them. I want the complicated to paint folks. You know, the guys I can read about their history or look up their shield patterns or how they might have, you know, heraldry or something like that. That's all the stuff that appeals to me. The stuff that people want to like gloss over. Like, no, no, no. I, I don't want them to, to I, I don't, I, I want them to take a while to paint. May I put my own spin on them. You know, we need to do a little bit of the back of his shield, and this guy's done. We got one guy left, and then five of these folks are done. And then we'll probably start the next day or tomorrow or the day after that with the next pose. But we can certainly get this guy done tonight. That's the plan, anyways. We're here to get things done, not not get things done. So just a one shot for this period. Yep, just a one shot for this period. Yep. I don't know that they make anybody. I'm not even sure who their enemies are. To be honest with you. Although I guarantee that we're going to play through their enemies like we normally do. Oh, there we go. I'm not 
sure who the hell their enemies are. Why don't I look that up? Their book 115. And see if any of their enemies sound even exciting to me. work it backwards. Mitanni. Okay, Mitanni look cool, but they're almost all mounted. Mitanni are cool. Fully armored. Scale wearing chariot charioteers. Those guys are cool. 17A early Hyksos. Okay, that's a similar army. Mitch could probably morph them with the sea people. And as a matter of fact, this is I could probably morph my army into an early Hyksos army because it even says, the Hyksos are rulers of foreign lands, probably later Amorites from Syria. Oh, there you go. They've got, in their core army, they've got four elements that are fast blade. So there you go. I already, I already would have some of that. I could probably morph, morph into that stuff. Because a lot of these guys just aren't wearing any damn clothes. So, um, is that pre-chariot? No, they're like fifteen hundred BC, something like that. Uh, they are uh, eighteen ninety four to fifteen ninety five BC. Uh, another one of their enemies is sixteen. Hittite, Old, and Middle Kingdom. So Mitch has, Mitch has those guys. He can make those guys for sure. Fifteen themselves. Well, I don't like doing civil wars. They're, they're boring and stupid. Sumerian successor states. Uh, 6A, early Bedouins. A bunch of javelineers. Well, they'd get killed. If they lost terrain, oh, they're aggression three, so they're even higher aggression. Yeah, it's probably like the, let's go kill the early Bedouins. Uh, 5C is early Susiana or Elamites. That's a crap load of archers. Um, 4C is the Hurrians or early Kassites. A lot of auxilia. And 2A. Oh, early Egyptian. Well, that's cool. That is pre chariot. There's no chariots in that army. Yeah, I think Essex makes a figure of a pharaoh riding a donkey. There you go. Yeah, so nobody really exciting that anybody knows about. Probably those early Hittites are probably the most exciting army of all of those. Um, all right, Sarong so for this guy. What's Sarong? So <laughs> Let's take a look at these guys. Yeah, I'm glad I did. I'm glad I did these guys. I finished these all the way through, because now I'm I'm confident how the how the 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 groundwork is going to look on them. Um, I really like the way these guys turned out. And again, this it's two stands of auxiliary. Every single one of them is in exactly the same pose, which isn't a problem for me normally. But they are irregular troops, so I would have preferred if they were in different poses. But hey, nobody asked me when they designed the figures. You know. Let me check on one thing, be right back.
the troop composition in a lot of book one armies is pretty interesting. The problem is, is it's just not very interesting for me to create more book one armies because a lot of the guys, I'm going to be play, painting half naked dudes like this anyways and having to try to make them look different from each other, which, you know, I could be doing other things, you know. Uh, that basing is much better than just a sand cover. Yep. Yeah, I got the idea from my carriage. Uh, the carriage turned out really nice. I like these desert arms. Well, technically these guys are arable, but they need to look like, you know, there's somewhere in Iraq or something like that where there is there is vegetation, but it's not, you know, lush. All right. Um, let's do this guy in a really, in a bright white. Not bright, but you know what I mean. Just to, do we have any brown left? We do there, and here's some white there. That's what we're going to use for that. This is how I make decisions. I'm like, oh, okay, well, this feels like do this, this color. If I don't like it, I'd come back and change it, but. doesn't do any good to just sit there and cogitate on it for a while because guess what you get nothing done and sometimes you don't don't have an epiphany and all of a sudden it's it turns out any better sometimes you just got to dive in and just paint your way out analysis paralysis The first army I ever painted for DBA, of course, I was already an experienced painter when I started getting DBA, but I wanted to lay everything out. Like, okay, I, I on the stand, I actually put down like, okay, this horse is going to be mostly blue. And then this pose is going to, I set everything out ahead of time before I started painting the figure. And it just, it added so much more time and so much more planning. So what I do now is, I paint similar things together, and that forces me to not paint them similarly. And so you don't have, you know, everybody who's in a certain pose happens to be blue or something like that, you know, and you don't really realize it when you're doing it. No Hebrew enemies, no. Nope. Doesn't make any sense, does it? No, no Hebrew enemies. Where did I leave off of? I had my color was mixing together. Just, just too much chaos here. I think when I'm done with these five figures, I'm gonna throw this thing away and move on to a new one. Okay, it is here. Yeah, no Hebrew enemies. Strangely enough. There's, um, there is a Hebrew army, Hebrew, Jewish, which, whichever one of the two it is, that I want to, uh, that I've been eyeing for a long time to do. So I did some research into them. And didn't necessarily talk myself out of it, but talk myself out of being so excited to paint them because it's um, Herod's army. And the problem why I talk myself out of it is the troop composition is very interesting. Um, and they can have allies as Romans, and um, they can have Parthians. It's, it's really quite an interesting combination. The problem is, is that their core troops are going to look very Hellenistic. It's going to look like a Hellenistic army. And it's going to be... deceiving it's not what i really wanted to paint i would have wanted him to paint a little bit more um well less hellenistic you know i mean they're like clean shaven and everything so it's like that's too much like painting one of my successor armies so i might do 
do them at some other, some later point. But I uh, missed just as well because I don't have the figures for them. I would have had to, you know. But I did look and you know what figures I'd buy and all that kind of stuff. You know, the, just the usual fun stuff that I like to do. You know, I consider that fun. Researching, you know, what figures would I use and how many would I buy and who would I get them from and so forth. But. From everything I can tell, the Herodian army of the would all would have very similar Hellenistic armies, and like the, even their shields were potentially could be red, which I wouldn't do them that way. You've got to do that's where you got to use artistic license and 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 you got to give them some other kind of a spin. But that is a list that was on my list. Well, that was on my list to do the. Um, I think it's called later Hebrew and and the Hasmonean Hasmonean Jewish and later Hebrew. I think that's the two. But yeah, they got auxilia and a couple of mounted elements. and You could just play them a lot of different ways depending on the allies you have. So, so that might be something if I built them. I could make, you know, give some of them beards with green stuff to make them look, look a little bit more native. You know, I don't want to admit, want them to look like all Roman legionnaire like, or or you know, um, even Macedonian looking. At least give them you know some facial hair or something. You know. Well, that was my out loud brainstorming that I was doing, but that's one of my favorite things to do. Hey, if you were going to build an army of whatever, who would you use? Oh, I love that stuff. I eat that stuff up. I had a friend of mine who, he was the opposite of me. He wanted an Essex Army pack and he didn't want to have any figures left over. And I don't mind having extra figures. Because I want to pick who I'm putting in my army. Because I want them to have a certain look. Three of these guys have details on their battle sarongs and, and looks like two of them won't. We're just going to paint these guys without that. You can always come back and put them on there if it doesn't look right. shield to do on this guy could do Maccabeans more native troops mixing I do I just I, I like the tie-in and there, there's some really nice Maccabean figures out there really nice ones like between the Zyston ones and the um, and the uh, forged and battle figures there's some there's some nice ones of that and probably I would pull some of those figures out for some of their uh, their lighter auxilia but their solid auxilia definitely are um, I'm gonna say they they look like light legionnaires without saying that they're that they're light legionnaires. They look very they're not what you would expect them to look like, or not what I was expecting them to look at like. But I know several people that that have done Maccabeans, but none that have done the later army. Be right back.
Yeah, so they actually make... Uh, Osprey makes a... Make sure I click on the right thing here and don't screw this up. Here we go. Osprey uh, makes a book on, uh, on Herod's army. And it's disappointing when I got it. I'm like... And that's what a lot of it happens. Is like, okay, what do you really need? What you really need is like ideas for like shield patterns. And they'll, you know, they'll, they'll not show the shield facing you or... Oh, a red shield. Well, I've never, I wouldn't paint them all red because it looks just like the Romans then, you know. Um, uh, you would think Hebrew enemies would be a prime enemy. Perhaps they are Hebrews. And I painted that army. They are very Hellenistic. In fact, they're a successor army. I know. I would have to somehow Hebrew them up some. And it could be just like, you know, giving some of them a little bit of facial hair. Uh, you know, beards and stuff like that. And that would, you know, that would help. Um, throw in some Gauls as well. Yeah, some of their, um, some of their cavalry could be Gauls. Yeah, the Zeistan are interesting figures, could always paint up a high priest and some rabbis. Yeah. Yeah, the thing that keeps me from building that army is I don't have any of the figures. I'd have to buy them. And I'm trying to not do that as much. Um, but the troop composition is interesting. I already have Romans. Um, they they are an enemy. The big the bi a big tie in is they are the enemy of one of Luke's favorite armies, which is the Nabataeans. So that's that's a natural fit there. I may do them at some point. They're certainly interesting. So I got to figure that I know exactly how I would use this Herod because I think he was a military commander. At least young Herod was. So you know, I um. One of the worst books I've ever read on Audible or had read to me or attempted to have read to me, it should be more accurate, is uh, Josephus's The Jewish Whore. And it's not the subject matter. The subject matter is really interesting. Um, it is just super... If you think that War of the Roses is confusing, that is super confusing. And um, the Audible book is narrated by a guy who I have blacklisted as never getting a book from him again and it's unfortunate because he's extremely prolific and between his mispronunciations and bad meter um it just becomes really difficult to read um or very difficult to listen to you and follow very difficult to have to listen to you no very difficult to listen to and follow the story like really difficult so, um, and that's the problem with audiobooks. There's actually a fair amount of people that are narrating books that just do a terrible job, in my opinion. And this particular one's one of them, and he's prolific. So, um, yeah, definitely look at the, definitely check out the little, um, the sample things and make sure it's somebody who's appeals to you on their, uh, on their speaking style. So, the one I'm struggling with now, see, the lead pile just builds up unless you work hard at it. It does. I don't. I don't mind. Uh, I don't mind having extra figures left over, but I don't want to like buy figures for Herod's army and then never build Herod's army. Like I don't mind having extra of these guys laying around, for instance, because um, at least I built the army. Um, the book I'm struggling with now is, um, is actually another one in a series that I really enjoyed the first one that I read. And it's a series by, it's the killing series by Bill O'Reilly. And, um, I read the, actually, I say I read, I had it read to me, um, the one on Reagan. And I thought it was really, really good. Um. But he wrote the book along with some other people that cooperated with him. But someone else totally different narrated it. This particular one that I'm doing now is the one on Patton. And it's narrated by Bill O'Reilly. And you would think that somebody who's in journalism, that's been in journalism for a long time, would do a better job of narrating a book. He is not good at narrating a book. Um, his meter is off. He pauses in the wrong place. He mispronounces all kinds of stuff. 
Um, he was reading something about, in the book on Patton, it talks about, you know, all of his campaigns and stuff like that. There's a part of the book where he mentions, what is it that, you know, he says Calvary, you know, instead of cavalry. He does, uh, he says 105 mm instead of 105 millimeter. I've never heard somebody refer to a gun as a 105 uh, uh 105 mm it's just weird stuff like that there's there's all there's several other ones and it just distracts you from the story you know I, I would have thought that he would have done a better job than that but um, and then there's some books that are just ex exquisitely done um, the best one I've ever heard is the one by uh, Robert I believe his name is Robert O'Connell Robert L. O'Connell, something like that. The Ghost of Can I. That, that story and that narrator are just amazing. Uh, Mighty Python's Life of Brian had all the different factions in it played for the humor. Yeah. Like two, two flat ones and a bag of gravel. <laughs> Yeah, struggling with that book. Oh, I know what the other thing that drove me crazy is. Yeah, he can't pronounce German words well at all. Like he's talking about, you know, the that SS guy that was the Kampfgruppe Piper. He calls him Joaquin Pieper. I'm like, really? Just distracting shit. And there's other things like that. So, I don't know. The story's okay. I expected it was... I thought it was going to be better than it is. But, oh well. They can't all be winners. I would give the late Hebrew army some Arab troops. Yeah. Yeah, just the... You know, the guys that got to look... The guys that have to look Macedonian-looking or Hellenistic... Is like this the any any blades or um, or solid auxiliary they have, and like the that's pretty much it. The rest of the guys can kind of be kind of native looking. There's certainly the skirmishers and rock throwers and that kind of stuff. The Saloy elements are definitely could be native, would would be native. So, but between the different Maccabean lines that they make between the figures that they make actually for the period that are Hellenistic, that are by Essex, and also the ones by Old Glory. Old Glory has some decent um, um, armies for that period, figures for that period. Um, you could do it. It's just going to be a lot of lead. And I'm like, I got other things I could be doing, you know. And at the end of the day, they don't have a flag. So, you know, there's the, you know, I miss out on painting a flag if I build that army. You know, that's, you guys know that's a big tie-in for me. <laughs> I'm that crazy person that likes to paint flags. I do. I'll admit it. They're fun. I like them. Do Confusing time is real of the time. Lots of nuts like the zealots running around. Well, lots of lots of, lots of people changing sides and backstabbing each other. You know, because he had a lot of things going between um, Herod and who was the other guy? The guy that starts with an H. And one guy, so the Rome supported one, and the Parthians supported the other one, and they switched sides, and it was just really confusing. That, um. I certainly want to read more about that. It just that book just totally sucked. With um, I actually have a I actually have a book that should probably cover it. I know I'm going to get sidetracked into a book, but I picked this up at the used bookstore. Really, 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 really cheap. And I think it's a pen and sword book. I could be wrong. Should get out of here. And of course I haven't read it because you know it's an actual physical book. When am I going to have time to read?
was this? Eight dollars. Make sure it's on video here. Twilight of the Hellenistic World. This is actually really good. You, you can tell how far I got into it. I just, I, I don't, you know, when you're when I'm reading, I can't do anything else. So I do enjoy reading, but sometimes it puts me to sleep. It's a little too late, too relaxing. I'm just like, oh, oh, stop. Let's hear some like, hold on. No, 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 no. 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 I know about how big it is. It's about this size. So why is it not here? No. Here it is. This looks like a really cool book. It is pen and sword. How much was this other than really cheap? Seven ninety five. Roman Conquests, Egypt and Judea, and uh, by John D. Granger, and this goes into Antony and uh, Cleopatra and all that's all this kind of stuff in here, Jewish rebellion, um, I really need to sit down and read this if when I get closer, I, I got to build that army. It's just, it's just too freaking, it's just too freaking cool. You know, um, Herod, whole thing on Herod. So yeah, this looks like a good one. I figured, ah, what's the worst thing that happened? I threw away eight bucks, but I wish it was, this, this was on now. Uh, I wish this was on audible. I could, I could get through it. I, I read, you know, if I buy an actual book, I don't always, I don't always read it, but audiobooks, I have listened to them almost all, and some I've listened to them the second time. So, they're a good value for me. What is your favorite flag you have painted? Um, probably the Hungarian stuff. Probably the stuff from um, Corvus, Matthias Corvinius, probably his stuff. You find that a lot of professional media people are clueless about the real, real world. Yeah, pretty much. Bill's a New York guy. I thought he was from Boston. I have a couple of their books in a period somewhere around the house. Useful is helping on Tactica 2 and the successor armies. Mitch played Tactic. I don't know if it was the second one that he played, but. The Tactic had come out before Armadi. I think it did, didn't it? Armadi I played a few games of. It was actually what I showed up to play, and they canceled the tournament, and they were running DBA instead, and well, the rest is history. The rest is history. But like I've said it before, war, historical wargaming for me, the appeal has been the, there's always something to learn that really happened. You know, and it's kind of your way of participating in history as, as most as much as you can. I mean, to a degree, not really, but you know, I mean, why read about a subject if you don't get to do anything with it? You know, here at least you get to paint figures for it or get to play that. Well, I would have done this instead of that, or you know, you know, us war gamers know. When I try explaining this hobby to people who don't have a clue. They're like, well, what do you do? Well, I play these war games, and they're historical war games. And the first thing people assume is that and people just didn't get it. And, and what I wasn't really wrapping my own head around it is people, for the most part, thought that it didn't make any sense to play a historical war game because you already knew how it was going to turn out. And then I didn't realize that they don't understand that we're playing these games with probability and chance and rolling dice so... Things can turn out differently. They just thought we were playing some kind of a moving diorama. Well, that would be stupid, you know. Um, 
So I could see why they were getting confused, but it, it, it never dawned on me that people didn't realize that what we were doing. It's like, no, it's it could be different every time. It is different every time. I'm like, oh, these nutnecks don't know that it involves rolling dice and probability and stuff like that. And then as soon as you throw that in, then they think you're gambling for money. I'm like, no, no, you don't win anything, you know? <laughs> I gave them a banner with a temple on it. They had a... Um, they had some symbols that I think it was like a cornucopia or something like that. It's like a cornucopia type of symbol that they would use on there. Oh, Don Harding has an army that he didn't paint. And he has... Um, he has an earlier Hebrew army, uh, like a King David type period army, and he's got some solid auxilia, and he's actually has stars of David on their shield, which is not correct for the time period. The star of David came out much later, but it works. Um, and I took pictures of him somewhere. I really like how whatever his painter is painted him. I really like how they how they painted him. So. Back in the early 90s, if I remember correctly, we were playing Tactica down in St. Petersburg, Tampa. Oh. <laughs> there you go. The early 90s. I remember the early 90s, and I was wargaming in the early 90s, but it was only 12400 scale naval. Playing Sea Creek 4. Range estimating. There's no way I'd do that now. I'm not doing that kind of work and then not getting a hit. <laughs> that's just... That's way too much effort. All right. Well, we're going to call this a... Oh, we didn't do his beard. Ah, we'll leave that for another day. He's nearly done. Let's see what we're looking at here. Let's line these five guys up. It's 9.30. How long have we been on here? Two and a half hours? Well, that's... That's nice. And I'm at a reasonable stopping point. Rivet counting occurs in too many naval games to be fun. I like it. I like rivet counting. What I don't like is not coming to a conclusion. Um, because now that I have... Now that I play DBA, I'm not interested in playing games that aren't going to come to a conclusion. So, here they are. A variety of different sarongs and such and patterns and these are all the same figure so the next batch will be um, you know we've got guys that have a different type of, of a bronze type sword laying by their side and the other there's five of those and then there's five of them with this also, another sickle sword. Kind of hard to see because they're black. Sickle sword over by his shoulder. Also with a shield. But they're all going to have shields. So um, You have it on ebook format. That whole series is quite good. Yeah, I have a... The ebooks don't work for me. I, I don't... It's, it's nice because I don't damage a book. And I'm kind of a... I'm kind of really particular about... I don't like books being damaged, but I just don't get through the, I don't know, I don't get through them um, electronically. I don't know, they don't work for me. I, I don't know why. Um, anyhow, it's nice to have an option though. Okay, well there you have it. So, just realized I can turn the settings up to 1080, you upgraded. I do, I have two cameras, yeah. I, I was filming before in 1080. Just it, YouTube didn't think I was worthy because of a mobile connection. So, yeah. It should look a lot better. Hey. 
Let's have you look at something better. Yeah. That's going to be a fun looking army. This is going to be just like, this is just going to be like my Courage army and my Irish army. Real basic looking nobodies that are going to be fun to, uh, to play with. And it's going to be an army that, uh, well, I've never seen anybody field it. Although, you know, the, hello, um, you know, not that rare, but because they do make figures for them, but, you know, nonetheless. All right. Well, thanks for coming in, folks. Much appreciated. We'll catch you guys next time. Um, I didn't mention it today, but, um, uh, but I did the other night. There will not be any painting like normal on, on Saturday morning and Sunday morning. I will be out of town for... Um, for Labor Day, so that'll have to wait until the following weekend, but yeah, we're going to be, uh, we've got, what is it, the first today? So we've got about three weeks to get the rest of this army done, so I think we'll be able to get there. Looking forward to doing the chariot, so okay, folks, until next time, thanks for coming by, and as always, happy painting. See ya!